David named his son by Bathsheba, Solomon. Solomon means Jehovah's favorite. Jehovah could not have given him a better gift. You will also ride like a king. Huh? Hold tight. Situated between the Pharaoh's powerful kingdom, Egypt, and the rich regions of the east, the kingdom of David was a land passage for merchants and armies. And he often had to fight to keep it under his control. David was forced to fight long and bloody battles. Jerusalem, which was called the city of David, was the center of his kingdom, but the heart of his kingdom was the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark was guarded by the priests of the people of Israel, the Levites, the sons of the Levi tribe, who were devoted to the cult and recalled the people to the obedience of the laws of Moses. But if David was a wise king who feared God, his other sons were neither wise nor fearful of God. Absalom was especially jealous of his brothers and even of King David his father, for he wanted to steal his throne. Absalom, you're not lucky and you never were. Ah, when I become king, you'll be the first one I behead and that day I will prevail. You'll never be king for as long as I live because you're not the firstborn. After David, I will inherit the throne. You're too fat to be king. You're too fat. Oh. And so, to get the birthright, Absalom prepared an ambush for his brother Amnon. Here's the fruit. Mm. Let me see the ring you've got on your finger. Certainly, my friend. Take a look. Uh, what are you uh, doing? What you? Uh, uh, betrayed! Oh, betrayal! Betrayal! Oh, betrayal! betrayal. What's happening? What's going on? Oh. He's killed him. It shouldn't have gone quite this far. Now you're the eldest. Isn't this what you want? We will carry his body to King David. David cries bitter tears for the death of his son Amnon and the crime with which Absalom was stained. In anguish I have invoked the Lord. I have shouted to God. From his temple he heard my voice and my screaming reached his ears. Blinded by extreme pain and anger, David punished Absalom. He decided that his fratricidal son may not appear in his presence anymore. He didn't want to see his face ever again, but Absalom thought he'd won and gathered troops to attack his father's headquarters. Go! I'm the eldest now, the heir to his throne. Now it's time for David to return to Jehovah. It's about time he died and I become king. Forward! Absalom conspired against David, kindling against him the rebellion of the tribes of Israel and the lords of the bordering kingdoms, 
by promising them gold and favors. against Jerusalem, which forced David to flee his capital. And so Absalom took possession of Jerusalem. He thought that he had won and prepared for the last battle with his father, convinced that by then everyone had abandoned the king. David accepted Absalom's challenge, and leading those who had remained faithful to him, he marched against his son. However, being his father, he ordered his men not to kill him if they had to face him directly in battle. awaited final clash took place in the forest of Ephraim. David's army managed to cut through Absalom's army and break it. The rebellious battle raged on. Absalom's army was defeated. Many of his men fell in the battlefield. Absalom, who was very vain, wore his hair very long. Sir, your father, the king, has ordered us to spare your life. David has to have pity for his son, his own flesh and blood. But the people of Israel demand justice, and they'll have it. People hailed the victorious king. 
But Jehovah got tired of the unfaithfulness of his people. The demons of hatred and betrayal had dominated their lives. So he punished them with the terrible plague. There was nothing left for David to do other than cry on the sins of Israel and implore Jehovah's pardon. And the Almighty felt sorry for his people once more. The rock of Israel spoke to me. The ruler among men shall be just, ruling in the fear of God. And as the light of one morning, like the rising sun, a morning without clouds, from the sunshine after rain, the green grass springs. After 40 years of his reign, David became old and sick. But the greed of power plagued the tranquility of the last few years of his life. Another one of his sons, Adonijah, born to him by Haggith, decided to proclaim himself king instead of his father and told everybody that David had abdicated his throne for him. Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, couldn't accept this iniquity and she stood before her king to remind him of the promise he had made to his favorite son, Solomon. That Solomon, your son, would reign after you. Yes, Bathsheba, that is what I have sworn, my lady. But Adonijah has become king. He's sitting on your throne. He's just an usurper. This will never happen. Sir, Have pity on your people and don't allow Adonijah to usurp the throne which you had promised for your favorite son Solomon. That degenerate son of yours is taking advantage of your age, his evil intentions, and for Israel his reign would be... No, Solomon must be king. He shall build the temple of Jehovah. I was not chosen. My time has come. I would never permit Adonijah to commit such a crime, Nathan. But Lord... Adonijah is already celebrating on the terrace of your palace together with his friends. He has also invited the leaders of your army to the feast. And he told everybody that this was your wish. He must be stopped somehow before it's too late and blood is spilled. No, no! You, Nathan, prophet of Jehovah, and you, Zadok, priest of the Almighty, and you, Benai, his companion, will make all of you my son, Solomon, ride the king's mule. Take with you the royal guards and take Solomon to the spring of Gihon and anoint him king of Israel and Judah and blow the trumpets to let the people know and shout long live King Solomon and let everybody shout long live King Solomon then go back to the city and let him sit on my throne because I want him to be the only king over Israel and Judah In the name of Jehovah, I pronounce you king of the people of Israel, Solomon, son of David. Now I'm king, I'll destroy all those in Jerusalem who are with it's Solomon. Solomon. Father, it's Solomon. <gasps> it's Solomon, Father, it's Solomon. King David has made him anointed king of Israel and Judah, and he's now on his way here. He's coming along with the king's guards to take possession of the kingdom. He's escorted by a thousand men and the people are hailing him. Father, let's go before they get here. Let's go, we must go, Father. Ah, damn it, my father has betrayed me. Solomon, Solomon is king. Oh, I should have killed him a long time ago. After driving the usurper Adonijah away, Solomon the king, anointed in the name of Jehovah, became David's legitimate heir, sovereign over his kingdom. King David died, satiated of life. 
And Solomon's advent to the kingdom was like a new spring. Solomon was young, and he began to discover around him the most beautiful women of his kingdom. And when his heart had finally settled, he composed and sang for one of them a hymn of love that would be repeated everywhere around his kingdom, in the palaces of the rich, in the houses of the poor, in the tents of the nomad. But beautiful daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun has burned me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. Tell me, you whom my soul loves, where do you feed your flock? You are more beautiful. Than the most beautiful mare of Pharaoh's chariots. You are fair, my beloved, and handsome. Our bed is green. The beams of our house are cedars. Our rafters are cypresses. Your cheeks are beautiful with jewels. Your neck with pearl chains. We will make your jewels of gold with studs of silver, magnificent like a flower, the brightest flower among the women of this world. I am Anasissus, Anasissus of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. Come, oh come, my beloved, come. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the women. I charge you, daughters of Jerusalem, do not wake my love from slumber until she's ready. Do not wake my love from sleep. into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. Here are your men, they have come for you. of Zion, and behold, King Solomon, with the crown with which his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals, the day of the gladness of his heart. Solomon returned to Jerusalem. The ambassador of the king of Tyro awaited him at the port on the coast of Palestine. His Majesty, my Lord Hiram, King of Tyre, is happy because Jehovah has made you king after David, who was a friend and local ally. I thank you. My king would like to assure you that he will be always at your side to help you in all your needs. I thank you, and I thank your king. I called for you because I need his help. Then speak, my king will do all to satisfy your requests. I want to build a temple to Jehovah that will hold the Ark of Alliance. You see, just as my father David would have wanted. Tell your lord to cut the best of Lebanon's cedar and cypress trees. I will pay the price he demands. 
My lord will be pleased to satisfy your demands. The king's servants will cut the cedars and the cypresses for you. They'll carry the woods from the forests of Lebanon up to the sea, and then we'll send them in rafts to your kingdom to the location that you set for us. King Solomon's pleased because the King of Tyre's keeping his word. Your king's name will surely be blessed forever. Solomon will build the Temple of Jehovah, the only God, creator of heaven and earth. <laughs> 